you're all wonderful people. Um, we're trying to use our best judgment in terms of dispersal. We try to keep away from, from uh, you know, giving each other germs and other potential problems. So unless your family kind of spread out a little bit, try and keep six or eight feet between you and, and others, okay? Um, things that you'll notice, uh, there's no books in your pews. Uh, that's because we've taken them all out and they're stored, so there's no residual germ passing there. <laughs> Cane's moving around, I don't know what to worry about there. <laughs> uh, other things that we, we continue to receive communion under one species, um, we're going to have the gifts um, brought from the, the, uh, from the table. There won't be a collect, well, I won't say that there won't be a collection, but we won't have the ushers bringing the collection to you. There will be baskets in the back for you to use. Um, there will be no kiss of peace. We're phase three and we're following DAS and regulations. So what we're trying to do is make sure that you're safe and taken care of. And if you've got any concerns at all, please let us know. We'll be happy to try and accommodate. In the meantime, I am going to read what we're, um, again, what we're supposed to read for the diocese. As you know, Iowa has reported its first positive test of the COVID-19 virus, with most being here in Johnson County. Um, I read overnight that, that we have had the first person-to-person -person transmittal here in Johnson County. Um, people who have tested positive here are all, have all, mostly all gone to, on the same cruise to Egypt. The Iowa Department of Public Health is contacting those who have been in close contact with these individuals or are at risk of catching the COVID-19. In other words, if you have not been contacted, you are not at high risk. If you feel like you may have been exposed, please contact the Johnson County Public Health Department, 319-356-6040. In the meantime, it is important that if you have flu-like symptoms, fever, cough, sore throat, trouble breathing, and the like, stay home. Call your health care provider for advice. If you're sick for the sake of others, please do not come to church. Remember the three C's, cover, clean, and contain, covering coughs appropriately, careful and regular hand washing, and staying home if you're sick are the most important steps that we can take. Now remember the bishop has uh, allowed all of us to be uh, free of our obligation to attend Mass on Sunday. So if you make that decision, feel free to make that decision, okay? For your own health and for the health of others. Thank you.
Today is the third Sunday of Lent. In our gospel, Jesus speaks with the woman at the well to share with her the good news of God's life-giving water, which springs up within us that we might have new and eternal life. Please stand. Good morning, everybody. We live in perilous times, don't we? We celebrate the third Sunday of Lent, and we do it by, by having the Gospel of John read to us today, the woman at the well, a unique story. And we celebrate this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I've done and what I've failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. O oh God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, in the their thirst for water, the people grumbled against Moses, saying, why did you ever make us leave Egypt? Was it just to have us die here of thirst? 
with our children and our livestock? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? A little more, and they will stone me. The Lord answered Moses, Go over there in front of the people, along with some of the elders of Israel, holding in your hand, as you go, the staff with which you struck the river. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock of Horeb. Strike the rock, and the water will flow from it for the people to drink. This Moses did in the presence of the elders of Israel. The place was called Massah and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled there and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord in our midst or not? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, since we have been justified by faith, 
we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in hope of the glory of God. And hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. For Christ, while we were still helpless, died at the appointed time for the ungodly. Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person, though perhaps for a good person one might even find courage to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of land that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Jesus, tired of his journey, sat down there at the well. It was about noon. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, how can you, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? For Jews had no use uh, in common with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God, and who was saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you do not even have a bucket, and this cistern is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this cistern and drank from it himself with his children and his flocks? Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I shall give will never thirst. The water I shall give will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may not be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. The woman answered and said to him, I do not have a husband. And Jesus answered her, You are right in saying that you ha do not have a husband, for you have had five husbands and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshiped on this mountain, but you people say that the place to worship in, is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Believe me, woman, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. Your people worship what you do not understand. We worship what we understand because salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here 
when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And indeed, the Father seeks such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, the one called the Christ. And when he comes, he will tell us everything. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one speaking with you. At that moment, his disciples returned and were amazed that he was talking with the woman. But still no one said, what are you looking for? Or why are you talking to her? The woman left her water jar and went into the town and said to the people, come see a man who told me everything I've ever done. Could he possibly be the Christ? They went out of town and came to him. Meanwhile, the disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. And so the disciples said to one another, could someone have brought him something to eat? Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of the one who sent me and to finish his work. Do you not say in four months the harvest will be here? I tell you, look up and see the fields are ripe for the harvest. The reaper is already receiving payment and gathering the crops for eternal life so that the sower and the reaper can rejoice together. For here the saying is verified that one sows and another reaps. I sent you out to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the work and you are sharing the fruits of their work. Many of the Samaritans of that town began to believe in him because of the word of the woman who testified. He told me everything I have ever done. When the Samaritans came to him, they invited him to stay with them, and he stayed there for two days. Many more began to believe in him because of his word. And they said to the woman, we no longer believe because of your word, for we believe for ourselves, and we know that this is truly is the Savior of the world. Gospel of the Lord. We live in strange times, I think. Uh, bless you for being here, but please make good decisions, okay? your dispense, so make sure that you use your choices wisely in terms of your own health. We'll get to that later. Have you ever thought about why some things happen? I'm not talking about the virus necessarily. Um, I'm talking about why we insert John's Gospel into the middle of Matthew's year. Any ideas about that at all? It's kind of interesting, actually, to choose the church chooses John's gospel to talk about what? Two things, I think. Water, water that changes things, water that gives life, water that is essential to living things. But more about something else, more about coming to belief. John's gospel, as, as you heard me say a thousand times, I think, is, is made up of two parts. Um, the uh, book of signs, which is the first 12 chapters, and then the last seven, eight, nine, whatever, to chapter 20, and then the appendix of 21, um, talks about the book of glory. And within John's gospel, he's lots of contrasts, lots of levels of things. In, in, how do I say that? He, could, he has everybody talking on one level, and then it has another meaning, and another meaning, and yet another meaning. It's kind of like us, you know, when, when we meet somebody on the street and we're, you know, we're kind and good and, and about that deep, right? You know how that is. And then we get to know them, we have a beer maybe, and, 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 and they get to know them and, and, and we decide we like them a little bit, and so it goes to maybe a little, little deeper level. Then we get to know them a little better and, and yet a deeper level happens. Finally, we get to a point in a relationship that we trust and and, and really don't have too many pro inhibitions, not prohibitions, inhibitions, um, and we trust them a lot. We get to deeper knowledge, and all those are stacked on one another. 
Well, John's Gospel does that. And this story does that. It talks about Jesus as living water. What's he trying to do? Well, it's really interesting that he's in Samaria. Uh, the Samaria's, Samarians are outcasts. Not because of anything that they did necessarily. Um, in the 700s BC, uh, the Assyrians took over the northern tribes, okay? And uh, the Samarians were a northern tribe. And, and because of that, they took all the leadership back to Assyria, and people intermarried with Phoenicians and all those that lived along the Mediterranean. And you can tell that they, there's some intermixing of, of Jewish belief with some of the belief of, of others. And the Jews from southern um, Judea understand them to be different people. They don't believe the same kinds of things necessarily, although the difference is, is interesting. Ultimately, what this story talks about is the thing that we talk about in Lent, that Jesus, as living water, changes hearts. We go from darkness to light, death to life, unbelief to belief, from conversion to newness of life talks about what we do in Lent. We approach who we are. Why? To change our hearts. We all give up stuff for Lent, right? I give up things. But that's the problem. We give up things. What Lent calls us to is to give up part of ourselves. Water changes things over time. Water grows things. You and I are called to change our hearts, to become something new, to grow change who we are. This story is about that. It really is about that. To confront who we are during this time, recognize the divine among us, and become new. John's Gospel has that divine ego on me. I am. The divine I am. You heard the story. Are you the Christ? I am. I am. And I give life. Life that you can't see, can't touch, can't really drink. But I give life. You and I are called to a new life. Interesting. I read a comment. One of the, the scripture commentators, a good Jesuit, suggested that this woman although not intended, supposedly, was the very first preacher of the gospel in Jesus' time other than Jesus. Think about that. She came from not belief to belief. She changed from where she was to something new. And then what did she do? She went and told everybody about it. She went out and did something. She became a new person. She changed not only who she was, but brought others to belief. You and I are called to that same kind of conversion, this whole newness of heart. We are called to be a sign of the presence of the living God. You and I are called to change our hearts and then live in the world as signs of that conversion. So why do we have John in the middle of the A cycle, simply because of that, to remind us that we're all called to conversion, to become new, to be refreshed, to grow, and to be signs of the living God. My brothers and sisters, let us stand and profess what we believe. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, 
born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Mindful that God is the source of our life, we present our needs with confidence and trust. for the church, that the fountain of God's grace may spring within us, filling our hearts with new and abundant life. office, that they will respond to the needs of the poor, the homeless, and the unemployed. preparing for baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist, that they will know the support and encouragement of our faith community. that they will experience God's loving care and concern. continued commitment to stewardship as a way of life. Continue to quench our thirst for you, that we may be filled with the gift of your loving presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For when he asked the Samaritan woman for water to drink, he had already created the gift of faith within her. And so ardently did he thirst for her faith that he kindled in her the fire of divine love. And so we too give you thanks with the angels and praise your mighty deeds as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by that same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of it, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy 
and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. My friends, at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With you.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be.
Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Briefly, well, maybe briefly. <laughs> um, please see the bulletin insert. It's a salmon-colored insert um, this week regarding the coronavirus. In addition to the bishop's dispensation for Sunday Mass for all Catholics in Johnson County or attending in Johnson County, I know some of you are on the, on the periphery, please know that you're dispensed um, for until further notice. And there is other important information about the procedures and events that have been canceled. As of today, St. Mary's will continue to have the Sacrament of Reconciliation on Saturdays. However, a sign-up sheet for time slots will be used so that we can eliminate people waiting in line in close proximity to one another. We'll utilize the sacristy for confessions instead of the confessionals so that we can have an appropriate space between people. St. Mary's will be serving free lunch on Friday. Uh, please use the sign-up sheet at the entrance to the church. We will not have coffee hour or script sales in the coming weeks. Volunteers are needed to stay after mass for a few minutes to help sanitize the church. Clorox wipes and gloves are in the East Sacristy as well as at the entrance to the church. All of the pews and doors need to be wiped down following each mass and many hands will make light work of this. It has taken less than five minutes for, for each of the previous Masses, so if you would stay, please. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Direct, O Lord, we pray, the hearts of your faithful, and in your kindness grant your servants this grace that abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your command. Through Christ our Lord. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Go in the peace of Christ. <laughs>